Hello and welcome back to another Factorio tutorial. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me. So this is going to be a tutorial on the oil industry setup, uh, take two. <laughs> I I already did a video on this and it, it really, it didn't turn out how I wanted. I had several unexpected problems throughout it and I had multiple people suggest that I redo it and I think that is a very good suggestion because we, we did kind of have some problems. So I have uh, set some things up ahead of time a little bit and I kind of have things organized a bit better so this tutorial should be a lot more uh, probably a lot more smooth. So there's a few things to address before we really get started here. Oil is probably like like for newer players and again that's what this is really for it can be really overwhelming and seem extremely complicated because it it, it is. I mean, it's <laughs> it is a fairly complicated thing. I mean, even for people who really know how the game works and stuff, they obviously know how to set up oil, but it's still somewhat of a complicated process just because of everything that's required in all the intermediate products and uh, so on and so forth. So the other thing is the oil industry is probably one of the things, if not the thing, that takes up the most space um, in Factorio if you want to do it right. You can build it in a pretty small area, um, but it's going to be a nightmare to expand later and to walk around. So it really takes a ton of space to do correctly. Um, that's easy to expand and stuff. Um, this may seem a little weird right here. These are placeholders I had because I already had everything set up. And I could have just left it and explained everything, but I think it's kind of helpful to explain as I go. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And as you can see, I mean, it takes up this whole area here, which is a pretty decent amount. So let's, uh, yeah, let, let's get started here. And, and you really want to try to plan this out ahead as best you can because um, oil is one of the hardest things to expand if you need to like tear everything down because when a tank gets full of a liquid and then you delete the tank the liquid inside it just disappears you obviously don't get it back so it's just kind of a pain like if you need to tear everything down and redo it it's just e easier to make it expandable for the future so i already have my oil well set up here and we have two oil tanks which are full. Um, personally, I like using oil tanks. I know there's some people who don't. I just think it's a good idea to have in reserve uh, that bit of oil here because then when these guys run out, if you still have, say, like two or 3,000 oil in here, that gives you at least a little bit more of a buffer uh, for when you can go find more elsewhere. So I kind of like to just have these tanks here. And we have our refineries here. And they are set to basic oil processing, which is the only thing you can choose when you first build these anyway. And then uh, I like to go with two just because I think one is not enough really for anything I ever do. And two seems like a good number, you know, unless you're building like a really massive base right off the bat and just need massive production to begin with. I don't think you really need more than two uh, right away. You can definitely expand these. I usually end up with three or four once you get into the late game, but uh, but two should be good. And for this, I have spaced some three spaces apart. As you can see, one, two, three. One reason for that is to leave room for a power pole, which I'm actually going to center because OCD. And the other reason is so our pipes can work correctly, and you will see why that is in just a minute. So, again, I'm not saying you have to do it this way. I'm just kind of showing a general layout and just a few ways to make it expandable and to have everything you need but still be able to, like, walk around through it because that's pretty important. So what I like to do is come three out on your heavy oil output here, two out on your light oil output, and then one on your petroleum gas. Uh, so in case you didn't know, this spits out um, heavy oil, light oil, and petroleum gas. And later on, you can uh, get 
advanced oil processing which changes which allows you to get another like recipe for this which spits it out in a different ratio uh, because you need a lot of petroleum for later game stuff so it gives you more of that and it gives you more light oil which can be cracked into petroleum or used for solid fuel and as you can see the heavy oil can then be cracked into light oil and the light oil can be cr uh, cracked into petroleum so this is definitely probably one of the first few things you want to get with blue science once you get that set up because it's really useful and you'll see later how much petroleum you need so right so we do three two one and this guy is not powered because we did not use a big power really we didn't use a big power pole okay apparently my inventory is full <laughs> um let's just go set these guys down here Okay, I'll just use a big power pole. Alrighty, and then you can just use underground pipes to connect here. And when you're making all this oil setup, definitely be very careful. Make sure your pipes don't accidentally connect to each other, pipes of different liquids. That's the problem I had in the first uh, video I did of this, is things got contaminated, if you will. Some pipes got connected together that shouldn't have, so then like some of them had light oil in them and some had heavy oil. And a pipe can't do two different liquids at once, so then it just messes up the entire system because it gets backed up, it stops because what's trying to come out can't go to where it's going because there's other stuff in there. So just be careful when you're doing this. And this is why I spaced it out three times because if I put it like one space or two spaces, um, you, you don't have room to fit these pipes how you need to so just make sure to leave enough room and then we have our boxes here which is the storage tanks I like to do about two to begin with uh, right off the bat here and two for each liquid and you can just run your pipe straight into there and this guy will start filling up now, again, like I said, the crude oil is kind of optional. This, I think, is really important. I mean, I don't really see a reason why you wouldn't want storage tank tanks for your intermediate products here because it just it works a lot better. <laughs> it does. It works far, far better than just having whatever comes out of here go directly into your processing. So this guy is going to spit out... here I believe come on little guy delete the box and actually I don't think yeah that'll actually work perfect all right so we got oops now these are gonna these are facing a little different than that which kind of annoys me but that's okay and then this We're going to actually not do quite like that. Alrighty, so we have our heavy oil connected up here. We are going to connect our light oil from here. And as you know, we already connected these two. So um, anything that comes out of both of these is going to go into here. And these have stopped. This is something that can confuse a lot of people, uh, newer players. If this fills up on one liquid, on one of the products, it won't produce any of the others. So, like if a pipe gets disconnected somewhere, or your tank gets full for one of the liquids, and these fill up, it won't produce anything else, and that can like really mess you up, because <laughs> then you'll run out of something you may need, because this hasn't made anything. So, just a heads up, if your refineries like randomly stop working, even though you have plenty of oil and stuff, make sure to check and see if any of the pipes are disconnected or backed up, or usually it's because the storage tanks fill up. That uh, most commonly happens for me with like heavy oil, just because I don't use it fast enough. And then lastly, we just need to connect up our petroleum gas. So I'm just gonna come out to here and here, and actually, I was one short that and again these are connected so then these guys turn back on because they can dump 
their petroleum gas in here. So these furnaces are going to be preparation um, for when we can unlock the cracking from whoops from the uh, advanced oil processing. These two here are going to crack heavy oil into light oil and they fit perfectly. You just really need a pipe here. Granted, you won't be able to walk in between these, so you could space these out a little differently. Like you could move these two up a bit, which might actually be a good idea. Um, but I mean, you probably just could move these up if you wanted. Just turn them around pretty much. And then you can actually, then you can underground from like here to here and be able, whoops, and be able to walk through this one. And then these two, again, we don't have the research done, so they're just sitting here. But this is in advance because like I said, if you like don't do that, then you may run out of room and have to squeeze things in or tear things down. And it's really going to just be a huge pain so I'm gonna put this here and I'm actually whoops I am actually fine with not being able to run in between these two since I can already run through the middle here that's where I would need to go the most often again you can space these however you want and then this will crack our light oil into petroleum alrighty so now we have all this done, all set up. Now we just have to go into our final products here. So pretty much the two main things you're going to need. You can make other stuff from this, like explosives and such. The two main things you're going to need are batteries and plastic. Plastic is going to be used for advanced circuits, which, uh, which are used for blue science. And then uh, batteries are obviously used for laser turrets, and they are also a direct product that Blue Science needs. So definitely you will need lots of these. Okay, so let's start with plastic. Plastic is actually pretty straightforward. You need coal and you need petroleum gas. Okay, well, we already have our petroleum gas here. So this is where I had it set up. I'm just going to get rid of him and connect an underground pipe. Try to use underground pipes wherever you can. Again, just so you can walk through things and it's not quite as messy. And then I'm gonna select plastic bar. And yeah, all these things are made in chemical plants. Pretty Everything with the oil is made in chemical plants except the actual refining process, which is in obviously the oil refineries. And then uh, I'm gonna use a fast inserter because this creates really quickly like a one second craft time and this actually have a, has a crafting speed of 1.25 so it's actually even faster than that and then just run your belt now once you have logistics set up I think it's probably better maybe it depends how many logistics robots you have and how far you have to go but it might be better than having it all on a belt and this is just I don't need it yet so I'm just gonna leave it there and then one thing you actually probably might want to do is put a buffer chest and I'm just gonna cap this at like two stacks for now and again you can if you use logistics chest you can set a logistic condition but I think a buffer chest is good again for the same reason as the oil because then if you run out you have some in storage which is very important Alrighty. So the next thing we need is batteries, and these are a bit more complicated. You need iron, copper, and sulfuric acid. And to make sulfuric acid, you need iron, water, and sulfur. And then to make sulfur, you need water and petroleum gas. So this is the part that like really made my brain hurt when I first started the game is trying to get this set up, but it's actually, once you get the hang of it, not very complicated. All you're going to need is um, four of these things if you do it to the same ratio I'm going to show. So pretty much, 
you just start with your sulfur, obviously, since that's the very first product you need. And then we do have to run our petroleum gas down here. And there's a few ways to do this. You could, one, depending how things are set up, I could move this back one and connect it from here to here. And that would be one way to do it but I'm actually going to run a different pipe. And the reason for that is because, whoops, if I were to pull it, and again, I know this connects up to this, but it's going to be spitting out um, petroleum gas anyway, so it's fine, these two. But the reason I do this is because if I pulled it off this one, and this was the only pipe feeding things, then our plastic would just automatically get priority over this because it's first in line. And that, um, I'm not saying that batteries should have priority over this. I'm just saying I would like as equal distribution as possible. So I just kind of like to have two different lines coming from our tanks because theoretically when you have it in your tanks and something like calls for it, if you have two separate lines, it should kind of just do each one separately rather than having all one line. So that's just kind of a good thing to keep in mind. And I'm going to need a few more underground pipes. And then we just need water. And water can be a little bit annoying, especially if you aren't anywhere near water. But that's fine. Now I've already put water here. Luckily we were near some. And this is a situation where I really just don't care if there's normal pipe right here because it's not really in the way of anything. So then we have our water. All right, so this guy is good to go. He's making it. He makes it the same speed as our plastic, so very quickly. And then we need our sulfuric acid. So we need our sulfur and our iron plate and water. So let's go ahead and put him here. And of course this power pole is right smack dab in the way. But I like to leave, well, you pretty much have to leave one space apart because since this is a solid, it actually needs to be inserted into here with an inserter. You can't like pump it into here. So you need room for your inserter and then it also needs water. So what I like to do is just run this right next to it and you're going to question that. You're going to say, well, exterminator, you just said not to use the same pipe. Well, with water, that doesn't really matter because the pump is like, it, it's more than sufficient. It can pump a lot. Pretty much it can just infinitely fill up one of these pipes. So using one pipe is no problem whatsoever when you're using water like this. And then we just need to put this into battery production with some copper and iron plate. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Put these guys here. And our power pole is again in the way. Alright. So two chests, one for the input, one for the output, of course. And then I kind of like to just space it like this. I like to have two because between the laser turrets and the science production, you need a lot. It actually, if you have the oil to do so, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to do even more than this and maybe even do two plastic facilities. But, uh, but I think I found that two is usually enough to hold me for most of the game unless I'm just going nuts with production okay so batteries on both these guys and then all we need is our copper and iron plate so you could if you're lucky enough to have this set up by your smelting production your smelting facilities it's probably best to just run a belt of each up to these because it's a pain to refill them manually and it takes quite a lot. Now, me, I don't want to run a bell all the way from here to here. 
So if possible, if you have somewhere with enough room by your smelting, it would probably be a good idea to plane your oil um, over there. But uh, for this situation, I'm just going to manually put it in here until I get logistics, and then I'll just turn this into a requester chest and so on, and that'll just be taken care of. Alrighty, so this guy is not working because all we need is iron plate. Now, if you wanted, you could space these out a little more and have an inserter here, pulling iron from this chest. But I kind of just like to use a separate chest off the side here. And, of course, we don't really have much iron, so I'm going to take some of this and put it in here. And this actually takes five sulfur. So it probably wouldn't actually hurt, because you see this is like full, always full. So it probably would not hurt if I had any iron to have two fast inserters. So once this makes, I'm actually going to put two because it just works quickly. And I'm going to put everything else I had in there. And then these guys take a bit longer, but that should work pretty well. And then lastly... This little bit here is for lubricant. You don't need much lubricant. You need it for pretty much two things in the whole game. You need it for, if I can find the research. You need it for electric engine units. And it doesn't take very much at all. Two lubricant per. And then you also will need it for... Um... You also will need it for your express uh, transport belt, your blue belt. You'll need two for that. And that's like, like in the base game, that's everything you need lubricant for. So you don't need a ton of it, but you will need it if you plan to make anything with electric engines or fast belt. So I just kind of like to have this be lubricant and then just put one storage tank. And this might seem like kind of a waste of... Uh, of heavy oil but heavy oil isn't used for really much of anything so except lubricant and then the rest of it I just crack into light oil usually you can turn it into solid fuel but the ratio is really kind of bad it takes two heavy oil to make one solid fuel and it takes one light oil so obviously it takes twice as much so it's if you're gonna do solid fuel it's better to just do it out of light oil and, uh, and yeah, I mean, this is pretty much it. So it may seem really overwhelming at first, and it is pretty complicated. But once you kind of get the hang of it and know some things that um, to do ahead of time and not to do, and once you've done the whole thing a couple of times, it really just kind of gets uh, stuck in your head. So you you really wouldn't have problems with this after just a few times. And that's pretty much it. I mean, everything's working good. We have plenty of oil stored up here. Both these guys are working. Everything's filled up. We already have almost 70 batteries, plus the ones I'd already made. And uh, 200 plastic. And it just stopped because I capped the chest. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, at this point, until you run out of oil, this whole thing is pretty much self-sufficient until you run out of a uh, resource. Uh, if you do decide to manually fill this until you get logistics, just... Don't forget, because then you'll randomly run out of batteries and you'll have a whole lot of problems with science. So, let's see, is there anything else? Uh, oh, one other thing to note, and I can't actually show it right now because I don't have everything researched. I could research it really quick, but it may take a while. Uh, I've seen some questions pop up before about like making the electric engines or the tra the fast transport belt, the express belt. Uh, people say, well, it takes lubricant, but it's made in a factory, so how am I supposed to do that? And I had the same question on my first base. I was like, what do they expect me to do here? How am I supposed to get this in here? Just a really quick note, and again, I can't show it because I don't have the thing researched. But, uh... When you set your recipe in in this thing 
in your assembler for either the electric engines or the express belt, it will automatically, once the recipe is set, it will automatically put an input slot um, for the lubricant. It will put input slots kind of like you have here. So, like, if you just do it, um, it will be pretty easy to figure out. But if you're really confused um, when you first try to do that, I just wanted to note that that can be done. You just put your assembler down and uh, select the recipe, and it automatically puts an input slot for the liquid. So assemblers can, in fact, use liquid, even though they're not really used for much of anything except those two products. So I think that's really going to cover all of it. I hope this tutorial was a bit better than the first one. I didn't have any problems, <laughs> except for moving a few power poles around. And, I mean, this will work. This will work really well. And if I need to expand it, I can just throw down another pump jack if I want and just add a third refinery and so on and so forth. Just make sure to give yourself tons and tons of space so that you can expand it. But, uh... But, yeah, that's going to be it. So... I do hope you found this helpful, and, you know, if you have any other questions, please leave them down in the comments. Any other feedback, I'd love to hear it. But, as always, I do hope you enjoyed, and thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. But till next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and take care.